Doing forensics required lot of things. It's not an easy job. It requires patience, knowledge, analytical approach and lot of stuffs. So in today's episode, we are going to cover a small subset of cyber forensics which is called browser forensics. Yes guys, we are going to learn browser forensics from scratch and we are going to cover scope and role of browser forensics, the steps to initiate them, common browser artifacts and if we are missing something at the very end so we are gonna talk about a lot of browser artifacts we are gonna hand pick them what are important for our own investigation and we are gonna focus on if we are missing something which we haven't thought so far and i would request you to stick around till the end because we are going to explore a new open source tool called hindsight which are gonna help you to not only collect your browser forensics extract the data and it will do all these stuffs automatically you just need to fire up that particular tool and the tool will do all the job so don't waste any further time we are starting right now okay so the first thing is our agenda what basically we are going to cover in this today's episode um, so we will start off with the scope and role of browser forensics we will see when it is needed why it is needed then we will go for the common browser artifacts right so common browser artifacts means when someone wants to investigate any kind of browsers what are the specific things and uh, specifics they need to look for third thing we will move forward and we will try to identify if anything we are tr like missing so from conventional ways of doing uh, forensics and browser forensics is there uh, or or we can say if there is something that we should look for but we don't know about right okay so we will concentrate on that part and lastly we will see a quick demo okay so uh, that's a kind of tricky thing so whatever the things that i'm going to discuss there is a tool available so i'm not going to uh, uh, like provide you any kind of information right now so stick around till the end it is going to be excited okay okay so next thing moving on so the thing is that uh, what is the scope and role okay so the first question would be asking or you guys would be asking that when browser forensics is required right so now there could be uh, two kind of scenarios okay when browser forensics is required so the first thing uh, is that uh, and, and we talk about all things like from industry experience right so we are not talking about from any law enforcement kind of scenario so browser forensics is required when there is any compromise and you are doing incident response and you only need to think about something right um, what exactly the things that the user has tried to access for what is his browser uh, content is all about what is his uh, uh, browsing content how the types how the patterns he was trying to accessing just before any kind of uh, compromise or any kind of incident and now now if we talk about something like and um, there is something a situation called ransomware and you need to figure out what are the specifics that the user has done before the delivery phase has been dropped or uh, there was a malware dropped on the user machine it could have been something like the user has clicked one phishing email uh, phishing link and from there he has uh, accessed some kind of uh, uh, like uh, drive-by malwares then he might have accessed some urls and all those stuffs so exactly those things you will see and you will uh, try to identify from browser forensics okay next thing is that uh, when we talk about browser forensics it's not only about the browser so what do i mean by that okay so let me quickly show you what exactly i am talking about so when i say if there is anything like a browser forensics um so remember one thing so your system also stores what are the files that you might be navigating through while your browser is open right so probably you have seen at the times your pdf files or there are some other files you might have been accessed from your browsers so your browser will be storing those files as well okay so now let me actually show you okay so how basically things works in that so if i do a quick file then 
uh, give this thing probably a triple slash and now if we uh, directly show you there are some bookmarks tab okay so now if you see this particular so these are all of my bookmarks that I have stored in my browser now what exactly the interesting thing is that just see just look at this uh, like this particular URL over here, right? So I am accessing, you are viewing a local shared file, right? I am not accessing any website and I am accessing a local shared drive. So it is in my documents and then settings, then in my user, then desktop, then bookmark. So if I have uh, like I have opened this particular thing in my browser, right? So my browser and my system will store this information in this database. So you can, while doing the browser forensics, you will see this kind of information and this will give you an exact depth of things like, um, what exactly the user was up to what exactly the user has opened while uh, he was browsing something okay so let us see another example probably if i do simply this user so this is my user right so now you see these are the full folder structure right so whatever i have in my uh you know desktop whatever i have in my downloads folder you see there are like lot of uh downloads things are present in my uh desktop right so you can you can you know um, like uh, open anything from your browser itself so nowadays browsers are um, uh, very sophisticated and it is quite intelligent to handle so you will see all this information now if you have opened something while doing browser forensic you will see all this information coming to your place right so that's a really really important thing okay okay so now let's go back uh, the third thing is that what is the objective so as i told you when browser forensics is done so we are doing browser forensics at the time of incident response so we are doing running behind that objective is that um you need to think through that what exactly the user has done right um what are the perspective and what are the things on behavioral approach that user has taken just before the compromise has taken place right so that's pretty much it about our objective right when we talk about browser forensics okay so the next thing is that when we understood about the scope and rules of browser forensics what are the steps to initiate the browser forensics and when we say the steps we need to think through and we need to identify how basically you should do browser forensics okay so the first thing is that image and evidence so when we say that so this particular step uh, is also like right, you know required or you can say that it is uh, valid for any kind of law enforcement and incident response as well right so image and evidence that means you can take a full disk image you can take uh, uh, the system into your custody you can take a quick uh, live image of that particular system as well so in most of the cases what we basically try to do we uh, basically try to do a live imaging because uh, for industry perspective uh, we think through there could be some something like uh, some tools like NKS. there could be something like Xeom. Um, then there are some other tools like Binalize so those things are present in two ways okay so one thing is that there is a client that is present on your machine on which you want to gather information from and one thing is the server on which you will be executing all of your actions all of your command etc so uh, this particular thing is very important that when you try to do any kind of browser forensics either you take a live image or you take a full disk dump of that particular system and then you spin up your own instance like forensic instance i have seen there are several videos of uh, my like uh, doing uh, windows forensics uh, i will leave the link in the description you can see that uh, so there is a whole playlist of that right so you can watch through from a uh, very beginning of it and you can gather information right that way so uh, you can use autopsy you can use several other tools to uh, probably you know extract those data what exactly you have uh, collected so that uh, comes to our second point so extract the database and json so when we talk about browser forensics there are some uh, like data when when we will see the actual example i will show you in a second so there are all the data that either the data will be stored in a, a json format or the data will be stored in a database right so you can read through the data using mysql database or any kind of tool that we'll gonna see in a second right so you need some kind of tool which can extract the data and which can probably parse the data as well so that comes to our third part so 
once you have collected your image from your endpoint you have gathered the evidence then you should extract the data from that particular uh, hard disk because all of the information on the hard disk is not suitable for doing your forensics right so we are talking about only browser forensics so we need to uh, very specific about what data we are going to collect and third thing is that parse the data what exactly you have collected so there are several other tools available i have shown in my past there is a video for autopsy it is coming in the i button so you can watch through that and i leave the link in the description as well so you can watch out that as well okay so this is one tool okay and there are other tools like celebrate there are other tools like incas uh axiom forensics uh there are minalize those tools are also capable of you know parsing the extracted data right okay so these are the basic steps when we talk about initiating okay so now what are the uh, so as i as i told you like so you need to extract the database you need to parse the data so now when you can ask me that hey what are the exact artifacts that i'm gonna concentrate on when i say about like browser forensic so the main thing is that you need to focus on three things okay so navigation history downloads and search history so search history i believe it's self-explanatory i don't need to explain that and downloads is as well so what are the user is um like searching on his google like if i search something like a black pearl uh dfir that becomes my browser history and if i am downloading anything that's become my downloads right the navigation history so what does that mean so navigation history means when you try to browse some uh something on your web browser you will probably uh you know uh, there will be one link from there you will click some buttons you will go to uh, another website from there would be a linked website i right? said so how actually the link list basically works this is basically your navigation history right so from one uh, particular website you are trying to navigate through another website maybe a sub page of that sub domain of that so that becomes your navigation history so that is very important when you talk about browser forensics because you need to collect the user uh, information in such a way that you need to understand how the user was behaving just before the compromise took place right so those are the important things so third thing is that we need to concentrate about the cookies the cookies <laughs> so i can't spell it and i can pronounce it properly apology for that so it cookies second thing is the cache and then it is the bookmarks okay so again so these things are important to identify what are the websites that user has uh, gone through what are the uh, cache values that is stored on the user machine so that will give you a handful information in terms of what data has been already loaded uh, what type of uh, cache values that user is going through so if i am trying to access blackpearl.com and it is my cached value in my uh, uh, system so probably next time when we try to access blackpearl.com it won't go through uh, the, the dns server or then root dns and try to get me the data so it will directly give the data from my cache values right so that is very much important and obviously you know like why bookmarks is important so you need to uh, gather evidence what are the frequent website that exactly the user need to access or user is uh, like habituated to access for right third it is a low level thing so form history and add-on so what do i mean by the form history so you will see that there would be a lot of uh, websites where you need to fill some data right so you can auto save those information in your browser right so nowadays it is possible so you if you do something like that it is also available in your history in your uh, browser database table and you can have a look through to identify what are the uh, pattern what are the behavior of the user so that you need to think through okay so if the user has submitted the form in one website and he might have uh, clicked any phishing link he probably could have given his data right so that's a probability right so you can think through from that perspective and you can do your analysis and you can take your actions right and add-ons is obviously important because there are a lot of uh, incident that currently happens from only because of malicious add-ons right so uh, it, it could be anything like you have an particular add-on um, you might have uh, installed this from any third party website and that's a uh, malware right so that's very important that could be a zero uh, patient for you as well right so you never know so low priority thing but still you need to think through okay okay so moving on so 
we have discussed a lot of things now you might be thinking or what is the exact uh, motto of this particular uh, presentation so if we are missing anything so remember so we are missing something and it is very very important data we need to look for on fabicons right so what do i mean by fabicon so let me actually show you what exactly i do mean by fabicon so if i try to uh, access some website maybe facebook.com you see if i when i try uh, to load the facebook.com you see there is an image of facebook logo it is coming up to my machine right so now if i just simply uh, uh, you know uh, access it when when my browser goes through the data so that particular thing is gone and now this particular image has been loaded over here right so now if i do a quickly as linkedin so you will see that the linkedin logo has been populated over here right so this is called the fabicon so what ex exactly happening over here so and how basically this thing is important so it is not something like an only image right so when we visit a site for the first time what the browser actually does it uh, builds the full url and downloads the particular data locally to your machine so the next time when you go to that particular website it it doesn't need to you know uh, go through that overall routing page and give you the data back so it is locally cached into your machine so that's the important from cache um, uh, history as well and this favicon so now why it is important so sometimes there is a small catch in uh, looking at the browser data history data specifically because you can delete that particular data right and if someone has deleted that particular data there are ways that you need to uh, carve the data from your allocated space using any kind of tool like autopsy but in a layman term if the data has been deleted so there are chances that you cannot get back the data right but but remember whenever you are doing some browser so there is a database okay so that is stored at the back end of your machine which is a favicon database right so whatever you have accessed whatever you have uh, uh, done from your browser exactly the same copy is stored in a fabicon database as well now you might have deleted your browser history but you never gonna uh, remember to delete your fabicon database right so you will see that exact information into your fabicon database now let me show you a quick image so that you can understand what i am talking about okay so this is an exact thing that i was talking about and this is a tool called like a snapshot from a tool called db browser for sqlite so do not worry i will show you another tool which will have the similar capability as well but but the intention is that just look through the data right so what exactly i am concentrated all about so you see the url so and and we are looking at the data of the uh, favicon database okay and you see uh whatever the user has tried to access like stack overflow then um, a static dot net then cdn static dot net these url has been accessed and uh, this is from the browser history and you see there is an image data this is a blob and this is a fabicon so i told you right i showed you there whenever you try to load a data there is an uh, uh, image that is loaded uh, in the first place right so that is a fabicon image and now you see these are the all uh, information that is also available in your browser history and in your uh, you know like uh, fabicon database as well right so now definitely you will never gonna delete this particular thing off right so that is also gives you a very good information in terms of uh, looking at the things looking at the data what the user is capable of and what the user is basically doing right so this is a very very important thing guys and now it is time to look out to our actual practical tool it is basically an automated tool uh, which will help you to extract uh, uh, parse all of your data from your browsers in terms of google chrome uh, brave and sometimes it, it will it is also uh, available for chromium browser as well right so look through it now okay guys so this is the particular tool that i was talking about the tool name is called hindsight so i will leave the link in the description do not worry about that so it is a simple 
tool written in python um so the tool is not simple but the usability is really very simple okay so what you can do you can directly go to these releases section and you can download there will be two files two executable files and you can download those data as simple as that and once that is done what you can do you can just simply double click on that particular exe file that i have done and you will see that this particular window will open in front of you okay so what exactly it is telling you so hindsight server is up now and you can just access it through the local host right okay so now i am accessing it as a local host or now you will see that so basically uh, this is the uh, uh, web interface that i was talking about so currently it supports chrome and brave and you see there are available description available for mac uh, linux and windows as well right so currently uh, the tool supports the for forensic acquisition and forensic data parsing for uh, these particular platforms and this particular uh, uh, like a browser okay and now you see this is the default locations right so if you are using windows xp uh vista windows 10 linux ios android those kind of stuff so this particular location generally your user data and your browser data generally stored okay now what exactly we can do it will uh use all of this plugin selector and it will show you the um you know uh, the data in a uh, simple fashion okay so let me show you that instead so what i will do uh, i will simply go to the c colon section okay so and uh, so what exactly the profile path that you need to choose okay so you need to choose some kind of profile path right so what is your profile path so it will be obviously into your c colon then it will be your user directory uh, you can simply come to this particular location right so if you come to this particular location you will see that under c uh, document settings there will be your user right so you can simply come to this location i will simply copy this particular thing off and i will paste it over here okay and the next thing i will simply uh, copy this particular thing from here app data local google chrome and then user data and i will simply paste it over here okay so just remember what exactly the things that will differ it will differ only the username section okay so in most of the windows machines this will be same you will just need to change your uh, user information and user uh, name okay so once that is done so i will just hit run and what will in the back end it will try to do it will try to you know uh, go to your browsers and it will try to gather all of the information that is available in your browser and it will try to parse all of the data all of the artifacts that we care about okay and if we go through in this particular area you will see that there are options also available right the chrome extension names you will see in a second what are the artifacts that this particular tool has captured and just remember whatever we have talked so much in in the theoretical section it gonna parse it gonna capture everything and it gonna parse everything so we will gonna see that in a second okay guys so as you can see here probably so the result is in front of your screen now so i have given the input path and now see though what exactly the parsed artifact so uh, it is giving you the detected chrome version well, how many types of url that you have uh, you know uh, uh, so far you have observed or you have access through what are the download record what are the local storage record autofill record media history everything okay and you see there are options also available so chrome extension so this is uh, uh, exactly giving you some kind of highlight okay so what exactly the thing you have done so far on your machine okay so now if you go to the terminal over here as well you will see the same kind of data what exactly you are seeing in the browser right so now how can you uh, view this particular data so there are options you can save this particular data to any kind of excel so it as you have seen so uh, uh, this particular thing is loading right now so it will give you this particular whatever you have information you are uh, seeing over here in an excel format you see there is an excel that got downloaded and let me quickly open that particular excel for you okay here you go so you will see that there are exact data in very detailed format okay so what are the timelines okay what exactly when i have uh, access these particular files when i have 
uh, you know accessed all of this information uh, if there is any data that I have login and I have uh, information about the autofill and stuff like that and if you go to the storage section you will see that if there is any stored information that is present on my local machine okay so you will see that installed extensions so these are my installed extension that I am having in my Chrome similarly you will see that there are preferences uh, what are the preference I type to uh, go through if there is anything like a uh, 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 similar database or if there is anything what I access through very quickly okay so I'm not gonna show you everything because it will uh, you know blow up and uh, it will uh, explode my data in front of you guys but this is the overall view guys okay and now you will see that there are options to save SQL light DV as well and you can even view this particular data in an SQL uh, light database as well okay so the data is currently loading it will take a, uh, probably a minute or or second depending on the speed how big you, is your data and now you see this particular data has been loaded okay so now you can run your SQL syntax if you know about your SQL things okay so you will see that the uh, select a table install storage and timeline so you can select your timeline so this this is particular thing you can run your SQL data if you are trying to identify of some particular uh, uh, data particular uh, probably let's let's see in something like a uh, lot let's think through something like the user has probably clicked somewhere or user has uh, uh, access some malicious link okay so you can just select that particular data so you can select a uh, star from timeline so you don't need to go through timeline you just need to select through uh, limit or or you can simply select something like uh, title right so select title from timeline and you can simply execute this particular data okay so okay so i think i have done some mistake okay so now you see this is the title okay so whatever the deleted thing i have right so now uh, okay let me go back to give the star and you will see that there are url okay so select star from url so url right so if i now quickly execute this particular data you will see that uh, these are the URLs. so now let's assume that you want to uh, uh, access a particular data right so you will you can write simply something like uh, where uh, URL equals um, so maybe so I'm just giving an example so you can simply copy this particular thing so it could be your choice of interest if you are looking for some particular data into your database now you see once you type this particular url it could be your case in your case it could be a malicious link what exactly you are trying to identify from your browser forensics and you can simply structure that query and you can write this particular query off okay and there are also options i believe so you can you know uh, uh, select a particular table and you can you know do a join queries as well so if that is important so you need to think through and you need to uh, analyze two of your database and you need to gather some evidence right so yeah so that's pretty much about today's episode guys i hope you have enjoyed something and you have learned something and very specific details about browser forensics why it is important what are the things that you need to look for when you are executing this kind of analysis on any particular system and most probably i will i i think that you are gonna use this particular tool hindsight into your arsenal and you are going to create some awesome analysis report right so yeah and before even leaving i hope you have learned and you have enjoyed the session so give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe uh, then like comment share whatever all you want to do about the youtube stuff because whatever the information i am sharing i believe in some extent it will be useful for you in your day-to-day -day life and who knows it can help you to create or land your next uh, cyber security and dfir job as well so yeah that's all and i will catch you guys next time stay healthy and stay safe